thank you everyone for coming. Um, we're here today to discuss strategies that CFCR uses to help you deploy production-ready Kubernetes clusters. And we will try to highlight and share with you learnings that you can have from our experience. Uh, but first, let's introduce ourselves. I'm Bengt. I'm a software engineer at the CloudOps team in Pivotal at Dublin. And uh, my team is responsible for maintaining production environments like the Pivotal Tracker and other kinds of deployments, including CFCR. I'm Morena. I also work in the Dublin office at Pivotal, and I've been on the CFCR team for more than one year. So we're going to start by trying to pinpoint what's important when you want to set up a Kubernetes cluster that's ready for production, especially describing the challenges you can face and um, what benefits you can gain from taking care of these aspects. We're then going to describe how um, Kubernetes poses some uh, obstacle to these efforts and how CFCR uses strategies to give us smoother developer and operator experiences. And finally, how CFCR um, works with Kubernetes upgrades. Let's get started. Cool. Um, so when you're planning to provision a production environment, you should be able to focus on all the elements that help you run your workloads as smoothly as possible, um, coping with real-world traffic, traffic and being able to protect your user data. Uh, so we came up with these four main areas of concern that you should focus on when planning a production environment. They are reliability, security, up-to-dateness, and performance. Um, so let's scratch the surface of each one. Um, so when we talk about reliability, uh, we picture operators that don't want or don't need to be uh, actively running the environment themselves all the time. And at the same time, um, the development team or whoever has access to deploying into production should be able to do so in, in the time that makes sense for the business and not in some kind of deployment window or any kind of policy that it's not part of running the business. That will give you uh, a requirement that re uh, uh, environment that, that requires minimal intervention to be kept running. Um, when we talk about security, um, <clears throat> Um, yeah, when oh we God. talk about security, we're talking about things such as being up to date with CV fixes and bug patches. We talk about having control over who accesses the environment mm -hmm. and minimizing damage when there's a breach, uh, which means that uh, the tools that the environment also has, uh, or already has, uh, make you focus on the workload security because you already control who accesses your VMs and your containers. Thank you. As you can probably tell, there's overlap between um, security and up-to-dateness, but the latter also involves having access to new tools and features that you can leverage to improve your workload and your environment as soon as possible. And it also means that you don't end up using outdated and unsupported versions of software. So this means that if you have control over your upgrade process, you have boring upgrades where you don't have to, work, uh, to worry about things such as workload downtime, or um, how, what to do when the upgrade fails. Finally, for performance, we mean that your resources are easily optimizable and that your environment can adapt to the amount of traffic it gets, which gives you um, a build. So it means that you have ability to scale up and down, vertically and horizontally, so you can, again, adapt to your needs. So, at this point, if you tried running or if you run Kubernetes, you know that deploying can be the smoothest part because there are many tools such as installers that help you during that phase. Mm -hmm. Data operations instead are significantly more complex and we're mostly talking about the production concerns that we are going to focus on. Um, this year, one of the special interest groups in the Kubernetes community conducted a survey and they showed that 18% of the users was using uh, unsupported versions of Kubernetes. They were at least three minor versions behind. And this is not surprising, because when you want to upgrade, you need a plan to make sure that all the parts that make up Kubernetes uh, behave as they should during and after the process, and possibly without disrupting workload and API uptime. This is not trivial and requires a very good knowledge of the Kubernetes internals. Yeah. And another crucial aspect is uh, what platform you're planning to run your clusters on. 
So if you choose, uh, let's say, for instance, uh, GKE, you have most operations uh, automated, but you might not be willing to be locked into a vendor, or you might already have a contract with some other cloud provider, or you might have a hardware, um, on-prem hardware, where you want to run your clusters on. Um, the other thing to take into account is the security model that you are planning to use. Kubernetes has its own security uh, recommendations that are important to keep your cluster safe. Um, so let's take a look at, so this is barely scratching the surface on how complex Kubernetes is. Uh, let's take a look at how CFCR helps you achieve all those goals. Yes, CFCR or Cloud Foundry Container Runtime, previously known as Kubo, uh, tries to answer all these questions. By the way, Kubo is also the name of our mascot. Uh, CFCR is an open source Bosch release for Kubernetes, which are, tries to take advantage of both the flexibility of Kubernetes and the experience and the opinions that the Bosch community built with time. It's available on GCP, AWS, OpenStack, vSphere, and SUNY Azure, and it's currently used in production by three customers. And we're going to describe how uh, it helps us with production concerns and Kubernetes complexities, especially focusing on what's provided by default and the key takeaways that you can learn from it. Cool. Um, so what you get by default when you use CFCR to deploy a Kubernetes cluster? Um, you get by default three master nodes. Uh, the master nodes are the nodes that contains all the processes that make up the Kubernetes control plane. Um, you get a co-located etcd process. Uh, since you have three masters, you have a cluster, an etcd cluster uh, with three um, members. Uh, the etcd is the distributed database that Kubernetes uses to maintain the cluster state. You get by default three worker nodes. The worker nodes are the ones that contains the processes that manages the containers that run your workloads. Um, so you get three worker nodes. All, all of these are spread across three different availability zones. You see why is this important in, uh, soon. Let's start with reliability. Uh, now we're going to describe how uh, CFCR takes care of production concerns. Um, for production readiness, you want a stable product. Uh, we at Pivotal use test-driven development, and CFCR is fully tested to make sure that every change we introduce doesn't break the existing setup. We have unit tests, integration tests, and turbulence tests, which introduce failure scenarios to verify what happens in those uh, disaster cases. Um, what you want is make sure that you cover all the code you add. For example, if you have custom scripts for your upgrades, and test all the switches and knobs in your case configuration. Plus, um, we use the official repository and packages. Uh, we don't have a fork of Kubernetes, so we are vanilla. And we run conformance tests, which are parts of a certification program in the case community to make sure that our users' code will run as expected based on the common case functionality. So you either want to run these tests against your environment or use a conformance installer. So continuing reliability. Uh, AJ, or high availability, is really important uh, if you want to have a reliable environment. Uh, what CFCR does to help you on that is providing you three master nodes spread across different availability zones. So even if one of them goes down, you still have a working cluster. Um, it's important to notice that you get the etcd co-located on the master. So you have uh, the etcd spread across the availability zones too. Uh, it's important that the etcd, um, etcd uses a, a specific um, algorithm to maintain its consistency, and it needs at least three nodes. So you get that by default on CFCR. And last, least but not, last but not least, um, you get three worker nodes spread across the availability zones too, so you avoid workload downtime. Um, yeah. So um, apart from setting up HA components, uh, we take advantage of the auto healing capabilities that Bosch offers for VMs and monitor processes. Um, so these two aspects help reduce maintenance overhead for operators and increase, uh, sorry, and relieve pressure in case of disasters, for, infra for example, infrastructure disasters. Finally, uh, we use BBR, Bosch Backup Restore, for, it never gets it, backing up and restoring our etcd data 
uh, and we use the etcd CLI for managing snapshots. You want to make sure you have a strategy for backing up and restoring, both for when, for example, you have uh, infrastructure um, disasters and you want to use backups, or if you're running uh, an upgrade and you want to roll back in case of issues. Cool, going on to security. Uh, as I said before, Kubernetes has its own recommendations on security. Uh, one of them is that all communication between the processes that make up the cluster should be protected over TLS. So uh, you get that by default uh, if you use CFCR. Uh, the FCD cluster, all the nodes need to communicate with each other, and all the communication is done over TLS. And all the processes that make up the Kubernetes cluster on the master and the worker, uh, most of them need to talk to the API server on the worker, on the master nodes. And the API server needs to talk to the kubelet, which is the process on the worker nodes that manages the containers, and talk to the etcd node to maintain the cluster state. All of this is done over TLS. Um, the dashboard is also protected, so you don't run into the problem that Tesla had, um, that they had clusters with unprotected uh, dashboards, and they had hackers that were you're using their resources to do crypto mining. Um, all these certificates are auto-generated and sec uh, securely stored using CRED Hub. Uh, more on security, uh, Kubernetes also recommends that you use role-based access control or RBAC. So uh, what CFCR does, it, it binds permissions for, secure, uh, for specific users and um, service accounts so that the cluster admin has control, complete control over the cluster while the Kubernetes processes have only the necessary permissions they need to run. And uh, finally, we use Bosch stem cells to be always uh, up to date when it comes to, for example, patches in the operating system. And it's really important that you test your Kubernetes configuration against the uh, operating system you're migrating to. Moving on to up-to-dateness. Um, are, uh, ah, sorry. Um, it should be running. Yes. Uh, our pipeline uh, tests upgrades between the latest released CFCR version uh, and the latest changes in our repo, so we catch disruptive changes, and we have smooth migration, so we can make guaranteed uh, migrations between consecutive um, CFCR versions. Uh, our upgrade tests focus on... Um, Minimal workload and API downtime, we have a 99% threshold. Uh, and this is especially important when we bump Kates because we want to catch breaking changes in the latest versions. So it's really important that when you are planning to upgrade, you check release notes so that things such as deprecations and ch changes in the default values don't come as surprises when you upgrade. Cool, let's jump into performance. So as we said before, it's important to be able to scale up and down both vertically and horizontally. Um, using Bosch, that's easy to do, uh, and you're just a Bosch deploy command away from that. Um, so this, this is a screenshot of a scale up YAML, and you could just easily, uh, as easily modify the original manifest that you used to deploy the cluster too. Um, so, um, as I said, this is all a Bosch deploy away from you. And in this case, we are changing the number of VMs, both on the masters and on the workers, to five from the original three, uh, which is the horizontal scaling. And we are changing the VM type to have more memory, which is a kind of vertical scaling. Um, something else that we expose is a feature from Kubernetes called horizontal pod autoscaler. Um, you can set the threshold on CPU usage and other custom metrics to be able to automatically scale up your pods, uh, your pod replicas, when the threshold is met. So uh, as for performance, the really key aspect is that uh, you are able to scale up and down because you have a repeatable and reproducible deployment process. And we get this from Bosch, but you want to find a strategy to have the same kind of reproducibility. So let's talk about upgrading the cluster. Um, what does the, uh, a good upgrade process look like? Uh, you should always upgrade a healthy cluster. 
So you should check the cluster health first, uh, do a backup, uh, and then upgrade the etcd nodes, the master nodes, and the worker nodes. Uh, then after the upgrade, you should check the cluster health again to make sure that the upgrade was actually successful. Um, so how the CFCR does uh, the cluster upgrade? So we start with the master nodes. Um, so the first thing that happens is that the etcd instance will leave the cluster. Uh, we do that so the etcd cluster is aware that that instance is not part of the cluster anymore, so you can maintain the cluster um, consistency. Uh, so now Bosch is um, can safely upgrade the processes that run on the master node. So we will shut down the processes, upgrade them, and restart them. Uh, the same process will, uh, ah, of course, and, the, and then the etcd rejoins the cluster. So now you have the three nodes in the cluster, and the same process will go on on all the other master nodes. So now it's time for the worker nodes, but they're slightly different because they're running pods. Yeah. So pods are the minimal deployable unit that you can use to deploy something in, in a Kubernetes cluster. So you need a different strategy. We use a process called drain uh, to safely upgrade a worker node. So the first thing that happens is that the worker, the worker node that's been upgraded uh, is made not schedulable, so no a new workload will be deployable in this worker node. Then we is, will stop each, each uh, pod or workload that's running on the worker, and they will be rescheduled by the scheduler, which is a process that runs on the master node. They will be rescheduled, and then uh, Bosch can safely start upgrading the worker node. So we'll stop all the processes, replace them with a new version, and start them again. Uh, the same thing, oh yeah, uh, and the node will be made schedulable again. So the same thing will go on on all the other worker nodes, uh, made unschedulable, upgrade, and then schedulable again. And then you have a upgraded cluster. Uh, let's look at the differences between the previous cluster and the updated cluster. Basically, they are the same. They look the same. They have a different version of Kubernetes potentially running. And one thing that you might, uh, that you want to uh, be aware of is that the workloads are scheduled differently than the original uh, previous version. So you have to keep in mind that to avoid workload downtime, you should have at least two replicas of each pod that you're running on the workers. So this is just the, the default way that CFCR deals with upgrades. Maybe you want a different upgrade strategy, especially for, uh, for scheduling. Because for example, you might want to have, uh, instead of just three, uh, three nodes, you might want to add a node so that you don't have just uh, the node that's been upgrading without uh, without pods, or maybe you want to deploy something on top of Kubernetes that deals with uh, scheduling in a better way instead of leaving the third node empty at the end of the upgrade. So this is almost the end of the talk. Uh, I'm just giving you a quick recap. So, oh, sorry. We said that. Um, for reliability, uh, reliability gives us uh, an environment that needs minimal intervention for be kept, to be kept running. So this is achieved by having a fully tested product, product possibly conformant, by having HA components, possibly auto-healing components, and having a backup restore strategy. As for security, uh, we can focus on workload security because we already have the uh, Kubernetes recommendation baked in our environment. So we have uh, communication over TLS, our back, and we have access to some cell and operating system patches. Uh, having control over our upgrade process means that we have boring upgrades, and we do this by testing our upgrades before going to production and making sure we know what's new in the new case version. And finally, um, we have a performant, 
uh, environment with, which is able to scale because we have a repeatable deployment process and we use tools such as the horizontal pod autoscaler. So uh, these are just some references, uh, our repos, our Slack, and our backlog. Feel free to reach out, and thanks for your attention. Thank you.